Jordan Kilgannon is Jordan Kilgannon, man. Many people would consider him the greatest dunker of all time. I don't think there's anybody you can compare him to. My name is Jordan Kilgannon, and I'm a professional dunker. It started off with my dad naming me after Michael Jordan. I would pretty easily say I was the most obsessed person with dunking like ever. It's kind of ridiculous. There's even videos of me dunking at one years old on like hoops that are super short. And then I worked my way up, you know, Fisher Price nets. Then all of a sudden when I was 15, I saw Air up there and T-Dub, you know, these guys doing crazy dunks and they weren't in the NBA. And I was like, man, you can do dunking and you don't necessarily have to go to be in the NBA. So my first dunk ever was at uh, 16. You know, I was working my way up, you know, dunking on nine feet, nine and a half feet. And then uh, eventually uh, I finally managed to get my first dunk on 10 feet. You know, it was awesome for me because I'd been trying for months to, to finally get that dunk down. And uh, yeah, 16 and I was six feet one. Growing up with Jordan in the yard and he would always be out there dunking and doing his thing. And so slowly I started just trying to, you know, imitate him and do the things he did. Dunking with him has been a lot of fun and it's also a lot easier considering, you know, he's the best in the world and learning from the best in the world is always great. For me, it was fairly easy to start doing tricks on 10 feet. Because I was dunking so much on eight foot and nine foot and doing so many trick dunks, trying to be like T-Dub, like Arab there. There's a lot of people that just try and dunk on 10 feet and then they try and go for a two-hander next and then maybe go for a 360 next, but I already had all that technique down because I was doing it on lower rims first. I was starting to get really good. You know, I was starting to do like show dunks that a lot of pro dunkers do. And I felt like I was better than some of the lower level guys, but nobody was giving me a shot, right? Nobody was flying me out. So then this guy from Hoop Mixtape decided to fly me out to LA and I dunked with all the pro dunkers. And all of a sudden I was like doing better than the pro dunkers because I had so much adrenaline, right? That's why I was jumping so much higher. And so that's when I was like, man, I can actually do this. And so that's when I made a jump to like, you know, leave school and then go for it. But when I actually started like blowing up was, you know, the lost and found and Scorpion and then it really blew up with the All-Star game. And then even more with the Gary Payton video. The first time I ever met Jordan Kilgannon was actually in 2009. And he reached out to me, he was 16 years old at the time, and he was a huge Team Flight Brothers fan, he was a huge T-Dub fan. He just has something in his head that is just more creative than the next guy. Some people are like, put limitations on things, like this can't be done type of deal. I don't think Jordan has that in him. I think he knows that he doesn't have any limitations. And anytime somebody's doubted that, he's gone and done something new. And it's like, oh man, this guy's right. He, you know, there's still dunks to be done. Creativity is a skill, right? So I find that my ability to create new dunks now is better than it was back then. That day that I hit the reverse 360 loss and found, I was actually not supposed to jump. You know, it was supposed to be a rest day, and then all of a sudden I jumped like, you know, probably 80 times. I just kind of kept doing it wrong. I kept throwing it too close right here instead of throwing it up here. That's why I have to practice it on the ground as much as I can. And I practice that over and over again until it feels right, and then I'll go do an attempt. When you think of a crazy dunk like that, and you try it 70 times, and you never even think you're going to get it that day. It's the best feeling in the world. The best dunk I've ever seen Jordan do is without a doubt the lost and found. It was just so creative at the time. It was something that was outside the box. So it just kind of separated him as a dunker and separated him like being the most creative dunker on the planet. So my signature dunk, I suppose, is my scorpion dunk. It's the most popular one and it's the one that I can do the most consistently. And my favorite dunk contest is gonna have to be a ghetto games. I was starting to do this dunking stuff and I didn't know how to be an entertainer and everybody was calling me a YouTube dunker. You know, he can only, he can only do it when he like tries a million times in the gym. He can't do it on a real court. And so this dunk contest, Ghetto Games, was the biggest one of that summer. The final dunk, I was doing a dunk over a car. When I actually got it, it was the best feeling ever. My ability to dunk the way that I do now 
comes from the years of obsessive training that I've done. So my training started off kind of ridiculous. Uh, I was dunking three, four hours a day on average. Sometimes I dunk nine hours in a day and I did that for years, but then I made the jump towards actually like weightlifting, got into like the high jump type training, and then my vert just started going up. I have different phases, I guess you can call them. So for a few months, I'll just get my strength up, you know, so I'll do squats, deadlifts, all that other kind of stuff. And it's a very specific kind of like anti-rotational type of core exercises. In my phase two, I'm lifting heavy weights still, but faster. So now I'm doing power cleans, you know, I'm doing squat jumps, that kind of stuff. And then in phase three, when I'm jumping my highest, so this is when I'm gonna be getting ready for a show. I'm doing you know, more plyometrics and a lot more jumping. And that keeps me really fast and elastic. Just like the resilience of him and the consistency to like keep trying these dunks is just amazing. I, it's really overlooked because people just see these dunks happen and they don't understand how much work gets put into it. Jordan wasn't born a dunker. He actually built himself into being a dunker. I'm actually quoted in like an old interview saying with my, you know, with my original guys is that you can't train to be what these guys are. And Jordan, 10 years later, he trained to be what those guys are, so he proved me wrong. He's one of the greatest dunkers that have ever lived and many people would consider him the greatest dunker of all time. I don't think there's anybody you can compare him to. I think he's just got mixtures of a lot of guys from the past and he pays respects to the guys that paved the way. No matter what level you are dunking, there's always something like a little bit better that you can do. And that's not that far away. And when you get it, it feels like a big achievement and there's thousands of dunks that you can do. So there's always something that a little extra level. The future for Jordan Kilgannon, I just see him using his platform and I hope he uses his platform to just create uh, more room for other guys to get paid from our sport. Uh, I think he can be the guy that paves the way more than anybody else. He's the most followed dunker on the planet and I think his path is gonna be helping people understand and helping people learn to love dunking as its own sport. Right now, the community is getting bigger and bigger, I think. Not everybody was training to be pro dunkers. Usually pro dunkers are just guys that were already good at basketball. Now it's more so people have been training for years just to be pro dunkers. And that's a new thing. And I think that's just the goal for now, is just to help it grow. And, uh, and if I can help it do that too, that's why I'm here. Thanks for watching my Dunk Diaries. And thank you to Six Star for the sponsor. You can follow me at, at Jonica Gannon on Instagram. And be sure to follow Whistle and Team Flight Brothers.